Hi guys, my name is Wilfred and this is Book of Demons. I picked up the game over the New Year period and have played it and my goodness, this is one of the probably one of the best ARPG I've ever played. Um, it's very simple, very easy to pick up, a lot of tutorials along the way and uh, you know I have a, really a lot of fun playing this game. Now in this video I'm going to play some trailer for you to set the tone of what the artwork is like. Uh, now go to town, talk a little bit about the uh, the mechanic of the game, just a brief introduction, uh, a little bit of voiceover of the character because I think it's fantastic. And then after that I'm going to play a little bit of like a short game uh, for you to get a feel of what this game is like. If you have the chance, if there is a Steam discount and so on, uh, just grab a copy. Uh, it is early access. I think they are going to release the full version in sometimes middle of this year. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I play it. It's really, really good. All right. Ah, the Book of Demons. A truly grim story in our collection. Not for the faint of heart. A wandering hero returns home. Only to find everything different than remembered. A horrendous evil rose from the depths of hell, devoured the brave and poisoned the living with despair. For in the depths of a place once holy, a dark ritual is concluded. Ah, the ultimate evil has awoken. Adventure. Darkness. Horrors. All of these await below. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed the trailer and agree with me that the artwork is really, really fantastic. So uh, how does this game work is that there are three classes. I've tried a warrior. Uh, when you are up to level five, then you could either pick a rook, which is the latest addition, or a mage. Um, so there are three classes for you to pick from. I have not tried the other two, but uh, I'm playing a warrior. Uh, how it really works is that uh, you know you started off in the town uh, facing the cathedral and you uh, just as the trailer has said then you descend into hell uh, into facing uh, art demon all right so I've already cleared the boss which is, which is called the cook or in Diablo uh, it's called the butcher so uh, it is very very much uh, a game inspired by Diablo um, a lot of gameplay and and all the feel, the town, the cathedral, everything, even the voiceover sounds like it. But let's just go into town itself and um, you know talk a little bit more of that. So now this is the town, the paper verse. Uh, the artwork is very much like a cardboard, you know, cut out kind of like a like a like a style. So there are a few character. Maybe I let me just uh, you know showcase to you some of the like a voiceover uh, on this one. Say. Is that really you? I'm so happy to see you after all this time. It seems like it's been ages since you left our town. I just wish we weren't meeting under such dire circumstances. Back then, it was peaceful. But now, the town is disturbed by a demonic presence that's spreading throughout the land. Most of our friends are gone. Some people fled. Some took their own lives. Some have just vanished. Those who stayed have lost their minds or are too frightened to leave their houses. So, yeah, I mean, I hope that you get the idea of how the voiceover like, is like, and you have someone who really sounds like Dark and Kane as well. Um, so, in, in town, there are a couple of characters, you can do a couple of things. But before I get there, uh, it is very much like an ARPG. Uh, this is health, this is mana, so when health is uh, down to zero, of course you die. But uh, there's something different as well, it's called the uh, Death Rage. Uh, so you have a passive, when, 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 you, you know, when, you, when the character dies, uh, you actually go back to life again and, uh, you know, and, and that's how it goes. It's just a little bit different here. Uh, from the mana point of view, it's very much like 
the uh, ARPGs uh, in the old days when you have the mana required to power a certain kind of like ability but you can reserve the mana uh, to do certain things like aura and so on so if you play games like Path of Exile this is at home with you so you have like the reserve one which is green for me and a blue one uh, which is the one that I can use uh, for my power so that is very nice now um, it the hot bar are uh, the so-called what you can do uh, or the, the aura that you do and uh, it is arranged in cards so it is very very nice in the sense that it's like going back to the old schools uh, when you play the uh, the card games uh, with the character in it and what ability they can do like for example you know uh, some of these could be like a health potion some of them could cure your your you know negative uh, L, you know uh, conditions upon you or some of that could be like this one here i have like um you know a uh, bloody armor which is an you know something that would reserve eight mana but then it give me a chance to spawn hearts or you know the health globe when i'm being hit and so on and so forth so uh you can pick any cards you like to be on your hot bar it is just that i would like to be just very lazy i mean you you guys know me. I think some of you probably know me from from, from a long way. Uh, I like to play some builds that are very enjoyable and not too hectic. And in this build, I do not have anything that consumes mana, but everything is just aura passive. I do, however, have the health potion as well as the uh, remedy for me to heal up if I need to. Uh, and then after that, I remove some of these uh, negative conditions, especially uh, when it becomes very, very uh, dangerous. Because like, for example, when you get frozen uh, in some situation, when you are overwhelmed with a lot of mobs, you have got to get out from that and try to heal yourself uh, rather than just, you know, slow down and get hit uh, a big deal. So that, that is very, very nice. Um, now what you can put here is the card collection here so you have quite a lot of cards uh, you have special cards i'll go through that in just a bit or you can have the like, artifact card uh, or item card or spell cards now what are the differences is that the artifact cards are the one that will reserve your mana and they perform certain function like for example i have this one called amulet of life that will regenerate life of just passively regenerate life. I have something called the uh, shield as well that would passively increase my block chance. So a lot of things are very utility basis but very useful uh, when it comes to uh, trying to survive in a very dangerous hell. So that is the uh, the artifact cards to it. Now item cards are the one that you could actually use um, as an item and yeah, it has a count to it. You cannot recharge it inside the dungeon unless you get to loot some of the boxes whereby it replenishes your charges so for example uh, the health potion has four charges versus say the uh, well everything has four charges anyway um, and you can actually swap things in and out as you like for example i i can take this away and put the town portal here so with that i could create a town portal and go back to town refill my charges refill my health and so on and so forth if so you wish to but there's a cost to it i'll get to that in just a bit now um so it's very fluid you can flip the cards here whichever way you want uh, there are some other things like the uh, ice bomb and stuff like that four charges you can pop it but uh, you can't really you know you have to do it with the uh with with the charges you can't do it with mana in a way if you look at how mage in the old days right if you look at the old school arpg or rpg in general there's a difference between wizard and the mage i think mage mages are the one that use the uh, the mana resource they can keep casting you know the spell while for a wizard, you know, they have a spell book and there is a limited number of times they can cast that scroll uh, into enemy, onto enemy. So it's very, very old school. It's kind of thing, if you, you get it, if you, if you play some of this really old kind of RPG. But this is, these are all the red color are the item card. And the spell card, the one that you can use uh, to, to deal damage. And uh, there's a cost to it. The cost is a blue mana, the one that is unreserved. So that's how it goes. Now, the complexity doesn't stop here each of the cards may have a var variant to it. Like for example, if you look at this guy here, the Amulet of Mana, uh, you can click onto it. I actually collected a few versions to it. So these are all, all like, you know, you, at a base common level, so it's, you can see the text there, level one common, 
uh, white in color uh, versus the uh, level one magical uh, this one has better chance to hit skeletons this one has better chance to hit ghosts and then this one has uh, you know friendly elemental teleport short wave range increased by so and so and uh, and uh, you know you have the uh, you know whichever it is better chance to dodge zombies because zombies are the one that tend to get you know uh, a lot of poison here and there so um so there's a quite a lot of like variation that you could use as well so you pick the variation that suits you all right so like for example uh, i've got a very nice one called the roaster the roaster is the one that uh, i have uh, here as well which uh, i have a few versions so I have the uh, common, then you have the magical, then you have the legendary, I think. And the legendary, I will have a different affix, well, have a th third affix to it, or second, second affix to it, uh, the, the purple one. So if you count the blue one as the first affix, and if the, the first one, uh, which is the common one, which is the what, implicit in Path of Exile, whatever it is, the 30% chance to spark fire, then, uh, then it is the second, you know, a fix explicit a fix uh, that would give you some chance to drop a heart here and there so there is quality to each of the artifact card as well and uh, not only that you could actually upgrade the card as well so for example i have this card as a level one legendary you could upgrade it as well um, i can't remember if i have a uh, level some something different here and the uh, these are all level one stuff now but uh, the, you, you could actually level up into something else for you to um to do better better spell now how do you upgrade upgrade is via again it's quite intuitive um you have all these special cards here and you could actually upgrade like for example if you want to upgrade the remedy right uh you need three uh runes so any runes any of the three be a sun or moon or whatever it is you could use it to upgrade this card and you can compare what the difference is between before and after uh, as you can see the difference is quite a fair bit because it, it increased the uh, effect times from 10 seconds to 30 seconds uh, so for example if you get poisoned um, you can pop this one remove the poison and then after that uh, you can increase the duration for effect for 30 seconds instead of 10. so that is one good way why you should upgrade it uh, with the uh, with the card as well but some of them you realize that you can't upgrade like for example the rooster the one that i like uh, the rooster uh, you need you need to have the one sun two lives and one any so how do i get all these like live uh, cards well you could actually uh, fuse the runes so for example if you combine two of the sun rune it gives you a life rune combine two moon rune then you'll get the death rune get the life and death together you get the truth rune and um, you know so depending on what kind of card require what kind of like uh, upgrade to it so it's kind of interesting as well because um, you know that there are quite a lot of possibilities and uh, you would like to upgrade of course a card of the highest um, highest like a uh, tier of quality so far I've seen the legendary I do not know whether there are anything better than the legendary or should I upgrade this one here's how it goes yeah so that is the the thing that you could do here uh, with this person the fortune teller you can upgrade card and if say you have used some of this potion you can use the charge card as well and uh, you can say for example I can charge one of this card there's a cost to it as well everything come with a cost all right so that is the fun part of it just to deal with the card uh, and how do you get more slot well i mean you can unlock the card slot by paying a certain amount of money or gold which i do not have enough here but as i get fifteen thousand gold then i shall be able to unlock more uh you know hot hot bar slots here and also um there is uh the part that you can identify cards as well so for example if you picked up a card that is blue or purple uh magical or legendary uh, normally you don't know what's inside so you have to talk to this sage and then you get identified but you have to pay 1000 gold per, per per identification itself so again it's quite a lot of like gold constraint and uh, it kind of make it interesting in in a sense all right now i talk quite a fair bit about the cars i talk about how to upgrade how to identify them how to fuse them uh some of these special cards um then what about character himself or herself okay now um every time you level you can choose whether you want to level up uh mana or heart uh you know that the choice of course is yours 
uh, but there is actually a little bit of consideration here because it depends on what you would like to further your uh, character like for, for me I would like to build a tank and so hearts kind of make sense uh, but having said that uh, there's something called the cover drawn uh, what happened is that uh, when you are playing the dungeon that you will see later sometimes you collect the prizes um, so so you know this, those prizes will accumulate as you play and if you level up your heart you get a mana uh, as one of the cauldron content as well if you level up the mana you get a heart as the con cauldron content now how to fuse all these things into your character is to pay a price uh, so if you talk to say if you talk to say the barmaid you could actually pay a price uh, to unlock all these items so uh, from my experience, a lot of these prizes would be like just gold, but it's a lot of gold. But if there are any mana in the mix of it, your mana will get increased as well. So in essence, what it really means is that as you level up your heart, you may level up your mana as well. But there's a catch to it. The first catch is that if you, your character dies in a dungeon, you lost everything inside. So all the prizes are gone and, the, uh, and just lost everything. The second thing is that um, if if so, you do gain the mana through this channel, I believe. I haven't tried it yet, but what I've read is that uh, from the dialogue is that if you die, the character die, then you start losing the effect of the uh, of the gain as well, what you gain from here. So it's quite a nice thing to it. And the last twist to it is that uh, you cannot keep upgrading or opening the prizes because every time you do it, there is a price increase. So like for example, I started with 1,000 was my first one and I think I did, I did a second one, then the third one become 2,000. So the price escalates as you use your cauldron more and more. So you have to decide when is the best time for you to use your cauldron. So that is yet another thing that's rather interesting. There's a lot of things that will go along with the, uh, with the character itself. Um, but I mean, it's one of those things that uh, once you start to do it, then you start to uh, get a hang of it uh, on how to how to play this, all right? Um, so I think with that said, I am going to probably probably pop by the next bit of the video, which is to showcase to you showcase to you how this game plays like. So a bit of spoiler here is that uh, when you want to start the game, you have to click on the cathedral. It took me a while to get it because I was wondering like, hang on a second, how do I progress? Well, go into the cathedral. So now once you get into the cathedral, this is where the things get a little bit serious. Uh, I started off in town, I go all the way down, clear the boss one, boss two is coming up, and after that the uh, arch demon, which is the, the last one. And uh, you could begin game, and I'm going to do it right now. Basically, I've done all these things on top, so I've already cleared from the top all the way to here, right? So I could actually begin game. Now, this is the really, really cool part of it, is that it depends on how much time you have. Um, like for example, I, in this video, I'm not going to do a long one because I think you guys will be bored, right? So, but however, say if I have to have time, I could actually dynamically create a larger dungeon and I create I will get more progress out from it so instead of 3% progress I get 11% pro, pro, uh, progress ultimately you need to you need to hit the bottom right so but it doesn't it doesn't penalize you in a sense because the more you want to do the more reward you have but you don't have to because say if I if my wife is cooking, and that's what I usually do is ask her, so how long does it take uh, to finish cooking? And she will tell me that, well, 20 minutes, then I'll just drag my things to around here, and I'll start the game, right? So it's very nice. I have not seen any RPG that does that. It gives you the kind of flexibility to, to, to do what you want. So let's do a small one. And for a small one, I'll have some gold men, and they'll tell you beforehand what I will do, and so on. Let's start the game. All right. Yay. So let's do it. Now, the dungeon you see here is randomly generated. So every time you go in, it's a brand new experience. It's something like Diablo 2. But nowadays, the new games are not like that anymore. Another thing is that it will reward completionist, meaning that uh, if you manage to complete all the, all the objective within the map, collect every single gold and so on, you get extra bonus. I love it because I am a big fan of completing everything in the game, right? So that is one thing I like. Um, now, the movement is 
of the character has to go along the the rail. So this is like the path that it it'll, it'll move, right? So the you know it doesn't really bother. You. I mean, when you look at it, it may look a bit strange, uh, but it doesn't really bother you uh, after a while. So when you mouse over your goal, it just collect the goal. So it's very nice. So you can progress, and after that, uh, you know, take something here, and after that. Uh, I haven't seen this before. This is the first time I'm seeing this. So there's something shooting me. I don't know what in the world is it. So I break condition. Then I get, I get attacked. Hang on a sec. Let me just like uh, let me correct some of these guys here. I have a lot of people attacking me. So you have to strategize where you want to go, what you want to do. And some of this monster, you have to get close a bit and try not to get uh, like too attached, like you know, uh, get attacked by them. So now this is to oh, hang on a second. I have to do something here. Um, okay, I get blocked. That is wonderful. So I need to catch a star, and after that I will get out from it. So I need to get out. I break the thing and I rearrange, rearrange my card as well. Uh, because they are all like everywhere. Now this is getting a bit like a uh, dicey, I must say. Now you see all this line here, uh, meaning that they are the. Yeah, I just cure myself. All this line here means that the boss is uh, depending on you know you have to kill all this minion before you kill the boss. So I have to like uh, these are all poison and whatnot stuff like that. I can block. Let me just. I get like uh, stunned again. This is quite terrible. This is harder than <laughs> it's much harder than I thought. I need to arrange my card. They are all being uh, stunned. So let me just take off this guy first. So now I can. Let me just get a little bit serious here. So I get rid of that guy. Okay, so I cannot uh, use too much of my um, potion. So you see that some of them are blocked, so that's nice. I click this button is to kill myself because sometimes I may. Uh, oh wow, this this is much harder than I thought. Oh, I got frozen. See what I mean? So now this is actually this means business man. Okay, so this is Emil because there's uh, another character here, so I need to kill this guy. Now I get I get frozen here, I get poisoned as well. So I kill myself, that was how I kill myself. Okay, done. So that is a uh, wow, this is hard stuff man. Okay, fine. I'm running out of um, I'm running out of cards. So okay, so that is the uh, so I kill off the the demons, uh, the minions. Is that Bowman? By the way, you cannot run away from Bowman. And you have to yep. So that's it. I level up. Now it may look a little bit complicated first because I've already learned quite a lot about the game and like Goldman for example is something that I cannot run away from otherwise they'll heal themselves. So uh, there's quite a fair bit of things I've learned already so it may look a little bit complicated but actually it's rather alright you learn along the way. Uh, this is uh, ice kind of thing and you, ha you, you can't be around them because otherwise you get frozen. Now you can see that I've already depleted all my cards here. And uh, and I've only got four charges left. I could teleport back, or I could just continue doing uh, what I need to do. But uh, it's a bit dicey. Um, it's, a, it's a bit dicey as well. The fire come from me because when I do my damage, the roaster actually create a fire thingy. Uh, this is a little ghost, by the way. So now there is also a little ghost, and this is the brick spell. You press and hold the button there, it brick spell. So it's kind of nice, huh? Yeah, it's a lot slower, but it's okay. I mean, I yeah, I don't want to. 
I don't want to burn all these like cards when I when I don't really need to. Um, so there's another one. So that's cool. So the fire come from me, but it will burn me as well. So I have to be careful uh, when I when I use the fire thingy. So now then they say. Uh, all right. So that's done. I try to dodge away from these things here. So I try to dodge all these things. Yeah, it's the first time I encountered this like a uh, very colorful thing. Um, so I did break the shield by the way, those are shield that you see, literally they are shield on their body. Like this one here, I need to hammer the shield. So the target uh, where I want to destroy the you know the shield and stuff like that as well. Alright, so so now okay, so that's fine. So I blocked something as well, which is good. So now I need to go that side, try to take down this guy here. Great. Yep, and I uh, just need to pick up everything and you see the golden kind of like a like the uh, you know footprint is to remind you what, where you have been because there's no map per se like you cannot, yeah. cannot really open up a map but uh, what, what you can do is to uh, you know it's to like record where you've been and once the golden thing is up then you know that uh, it, it, you know, you, you get all that you need to. Now, the, the reason why I'm walking back here is to actually farm back the gold that I'm supposed to have. So, you know, by right, I should have some gold that I should, um, you know, get as well. So that is the part when the completionist part of me will come in the picture and you see that I want to collect every single piece of gold uh, that is available. Like, for example, then I clear the level and I will be like, you know, um, awesome. It will be some prize to it towards the end so now uh, I will face the gold man and the gold chanter and the whatever far gold and lonely gold so it should be okay um, so again uh, randomly generated and I just come this way see whether there is some sometimes when you come near then the gold will come up because you need to clear everything every single like, like mob that's out there which is fantastic so now, this boss has five phases. Uh, they'll tell you all these five phases. So I would like to. Whoa, that is. Well, luckily I can block all this nonsense, man. Oh, I need to get out. Well, getting a little bit dicey right now here. I'm frozen. Now this is where the thing get a little bit dangerous. But I run out of charges, so just now I burn too much. So let me just clear some of these guys up first. So now I need to, you see a line there, those are the minions I need to take down. No, these are the boss. So the minions are there. So I'm being frozen again. Okay, I need to break this guy and now that this, I can. So that one was to break the spell break the thing and then interrupt so there's a lot of things going on you break the thing and then you need to interrupt as well um, but like I say I mean you know nothing too too hard after a while you get it uh, break oh there was something that I could have broken but I didn't uh, that is the um, now please one hold it and break it all right so now I need to take down the boss hold it break it so because I need to be clear near to do that. Hold it, break it.
Now I'm quite tanky by the way. Uh, just in case you wonder why I'm so close to all this mob, it's because I'm actually quite tanky. Uh, the way that I choose my choose my power uh, actually make me whoa, hang on a sec. <laughs> that was a little bit scary, but uh, it's okay because I, I'm a tank build. Uh, it may not kill fast, but at least uh, it's, it's good. So I've got another charge here. I've got an identify card that I'm going to identify in just a bit. Uh, but meanwhile, let me just like. Um, I break the shield. Uh, you have the target, not just hit. So you can you can see a pattern here, and uh, you can you can avoid it. I mean, you know, if you've been playing a lot of Diablo three, I mean, this sort of thing is a is is just a piece of cake, you know. Uh, those who have break spell, literally, I mean, those who have played Diablo three, I mean, it, it is your day to day job is to dodge all this nonsense when you come to Greater Reef, right? So that's exactly what this thing is doing here. Um, and <laughs> it's a lot of clicks by the way Yeah, so this is the Goldman by the way They are random hearts So so the amount of heart they have is random There are a lot of gold here I need to collect as well Otherwise I will not be able to collect the uh, the full thing So I've got two more items I've got lonely gold as well as 140 100 odd gold So I need to find a ghost that is hidden somewhere uh, Before I leave the dungeon now that is usually the hard part because it, um, it, you have to farm for the ghost and the ghost will only come out uh, when you are at the right spot to spawn it. So it is a matter of going to places that you probably have not and deal up just like this. So like that, then I have gold I should pick up and that's it, I'm clear. So I've cleared the entire dungeon. It has some scary moments um, because I wasn't familiar with the multicolor arrow. It was new to me. I didn't know what to do. So with that said, I'm done. Uh, and yay! And after that, you can collect your reward. All right? And it's really funny because you could actually have a lot of like... Uh, yeah. So I've got an angry bird to unlock. So how to read this guy is that, uh, you know, this is me, the, my avatar. Um, I could actually unlock new avatar, make it fresh and nice. I have a rank as well. And after that, uh, they give me the, um, well, okay. So they give me the heart of iron because I didn't die even once. I sweep, swept all the level clean as well as I killed every single last of them. They give me more result, I think. And after that, uh, they are, I've got something like, you know, uh, all this cup and whatnot but uh, yeah it's kind of funny and after that you could actually um, you know have this as a avatar as well and it's kind of really really interesting to see the progression in some way the next one is is monkey king and uh, yeah so so that's about it and they'll tell you that there are something to do as well um, you know you may want to start visiting your barmaid to convert all your prizes into something good or you know you can identify oh, you know what let me identify the card for you and do sort of like to see uh, what you get from it so now i've done it now let me identify the cards here i got one of them very exciting so i can identify this guy it's a blue one i think and let's go for it it's a green card so it's something that i could use it's a rune card uh, so the rune card is a life rune so on its own it's like the uh like two moon, right? Those are life, life rune. So I could actually unlock the card slot as well. Why not? Because I, I think I have the money to do it. So now I have uh, got another one here. Now the uh, <laughs> the only challenge is that I don't really have a lot of mana, which is six mana. So what I could do here is uh, is either find something like the uh, oh three mana, ignore damage from fire, which is kind of nice. You know why? Because when I use my roaster, I I would hit the monster, it will create a puddle of fire and when I walk in, into it, I also get burned as well. So that is quite neat. But then it depends on what kind of dungeons that I'm running as well. There are other things like trying to dodge damage from skeleton or there are th things like, this is nice, trying to avoid stun, create hit damage reduction. And it's good because some of the mob actually run into you and stun you and then kind of knock down some of the cards so you know i could actually have this one as one of my cards as well right or i can like um you know measurement range from target 
uh, that is nice because with that then I have yeah so I have reserved everything but I have a even higher range for example so you know you can pick a match uh, a lot of things you can upgrade accordingly and there's really a lot of things that you could do or say I want to just do an ice bomb because you know just for the fun of it I can like uh, you know, destroy a lot of things at one shot then yeah why not that could be it as well there's a lot of flexibility and right now what else can I do well I should charge my card because as you can see I use up quite a lot of them in my, in my video so that's it I charge my card and the uh, and yeah that's about it you know do I want to run this guy mm, maybe maybe not I mean you know the uh, I still want to to level up quite a fair bit before I do that but I think you know what, for you guys in this video, why not I do it once? So I could actually upgrade all my points into, into the uh, health here. I have 40 now. And then simultaneously, I could actually use the Quadron because the Quadron has 4 mana now here. And I would say that, well, why don't, why don't I spend 2,000 gold and to collect the price? So each time I do it, it will be more expensive. Um, you know, but when a, when a, when a hero dies, unbought prices are lost. So you know, so you can say, yeah, why not do that? And I get a mana as well. And after that, I get all the prices. Now let's see what I have here. The I've got one thousand odd going into the bank. And after that, I've got more here, which is also more money that go along with it. And I've got another one here, which is the ooh. I have a double XP kind of like a thing which is nice so now I'll, I can level a little bit faster uh, for for a fair bit there so for about one level well it's less than that for about yeah for about two well less than two level but more than one level I'm getting some kind of bonus which is great um, so yeah I mean I hope you enjoy uh, do check out the game when you have a chance uh, in Steam and it's an early access, but it played like a full game to me. So yeah, have fun. See you next time. Goodbye.